Hi class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in this video today, we are gonna look at the limit definition of a derivative, and I want to introduce the idea, starting with our graph that we have here. So imagine we have this particular graph, the famous calculus graph, if you will, and uh, well, we wanna think about two points, say, on this particular graph. So maybe we'll talk about the point here, and how about over here? Now we could imagine the average rate of change happening between these two points such that I have a line that's drawn between these two pink points and the average rate of change between those two points would essentially be the slope of this little dashed line that I have drawn. However, what we want to do in calculus is imagine those two points getting closer and closer together. Imagine if I could take this particular point here and slide it to the left to be closer and closer to this first point that I have over here on the left. And so when we do that, we need to think about taking the limit, the limit in particular of all of the average rates of change that are produced between any two points that I have on this particular graph. And yet I want the space between those two points to be really, really small, eventually so small that we would say infinitesimally small, okay? So that's the idea. All right, so as we develop this limit definition of the derivative, I want you to uh, imagine that we have in this particular point right here, let's just label this on the x-axis as A, some quantity. And this point over here will have an input oops, we'll have an input of B on this axis. So we have a value A and a B. And if my function is F of X, when I evaluate my function at A, I have an output, say, of F of A, right about here. And correspondingly, if I do the same with an input of B, I have an output over here also, in this case though, F of B. Okay, knowing all those pieces, what we want to imagine, like I was mentioning before, is I'd really like to have that space between, say, these two values, A and B, to really be small. In fact, so small that we're gonna say that this is gonna essentially be going to zero. And because we want to kind of distinguish between all the letters that are up here, let's talk about the space between these input values to just be H. So the space between A and B will just be called H, and we would like H to go to zero, okay? Okay, so let me actually go to the starting of the limit definition of a derivative, and so, and then I'll come back to the graph. So we can say now that we have F prime of X will be equal to the limit, just as I was saying, the limit as when our h goes to zero. So the limit as h goes to zero, this is our h, we want that to essentially go to zero. It won't actually be zero per se. It's a concept, an idea that we want it to go to zero. And then now what we're gonna have following this is essentially an expression, a formula that is our average rates of change. And what we do in our formula is we say, okay, let's come back to this graph and say, well, if this represents, this A represents X and this B represents another X and the space between them is a amount H, we can say, well, let's kind of change this up a little bit and label this one maybe as just X. And because this distance is just H, let's call this X plus H. It is this value plus some H distance to make us arrive at an X plus H quantity. Well, if I change those here on the input um, axis, I have to correspondingly change my function values over here. So I can no longer have F of A's and F of B's, but instead what I'll have is an F of X um, happening right about here. And for the second value, when this is X plus H, I have a function value that's F of X plus H. Okay. So back to our formula, what goes in the bracket again is our average rate of change formula. Think slope, right? The change in my output values, my Y values, 
divided by the change in my input values. So um, let's build that from the notation we have over here. The change in my output values, I'm looking for the change that happens here, that vertical increase over here. Well, that is f of x plus h, okay, minus f of x. That will reveal to me the different, the distance here between those output values, that vertical distance. So then I will subtract my f of x, and I will then divide it by the difference between my input values. So I already know, though, that this is a quantity h. Well, you could think it's really x plus h minus x. Well, that just gives me h. So down in the denominator, we have just an h that is here. So the part that's in the brackets here, it's important to know that that is really a kind of calculus version way of writing slope, and which of course is our average rates of change. But when we're talking about sort of morphing that average rate of change to an instantaneous rate of change, which is our derivative, we need to take the limit of those average rates of change, and specifically the limit as h goes to zero of those average rates of change, and that will give us our derivative, okay? So in the next videos, what we're going to be exploring are several examples utilizing this limit definition of a derivative, okay? So we hope that you um, come back to us and, and watch our additional videos, and please click to subscribe to all our videos. Thanks.